Good morning. Welcome to the morning service, whether you're here in person or online. We're glad that you're here with us today. And we're going to sing a couple of songs to get started. So if you'll stand with us as we sing, Here I Am to Worship. Savior, my Savior lives, my Savior's all. 
let me breathe. My strength, my soul is from the spring. That he who lives to be my king must die to be my savior. That he would leave his place on high and come for sinful men. Thank you for working with us through that second song. Between Mario being here after giving birth, the baby was here yesterday at a birthday party with his mom, and uh, Mario uh, has been a dad now for how many weeks? Two weeks. So thank you for being here. Amen. Answer to prayer. The baby looks good, and he's, he said, I can be here for the service, and I'm going to go back home and be with mama and the baby and i totally understand so we're glad that he was here this morning and hopefully we get back into practice rotation pretty regularly um that, that's an answer to prayer dwight and tina have an answer to prayer and god's been with them and we had a good easter dinner and a good easter week and a lot of things going on um, if you look around the side of the building over here you'll see a bunch of boxes that are full of stuff for the ukrainian refugees um, from Send Relief, that's part of ministry that we support through our giving to the cooperative program. And uh, so a guy came on Friday with a truck and unloaded these things, and they've already taken some to the rest stop uh, for those people that are staying. So uh, now Ricardo is still feed uh, Ricardo Juvenal is still feeding him on the other side of the border, and uh, had given gave them breakfast today. And he said that the border is going to be closing a little bit for those refugees. So uh, we also ran into a situation um, through someone else. And there is a Russian family over there that's trying to come in. And not all Russians support the war. And so many have fled. And so, but our government has not been as welcoming to them. And so there were some people that were trying to do some things to see if we get the Russians to come across. And I don't know the whole story with that, but we need to continue to pray. But we're thankful that God is taking care of these things, providing. Uh, the Red Cross donated over 100 cots to, the, to this effort so that they would have a place. And there was a church uh, that's being renovated up in Lemon Grove uh, that another church owns. And they said we could have them come and stay here. So they've been staying there, and they've also been at uh, uh, Ocean View Chula Vista as well as just a waypoint. Many of them have a place to go. Uh, so they come across, and they just, we give them some supplies and maybe see if they need a shower or something, let them make some phone calls to contact their family, and then they're gone. They're gone to the airport or gone to the bus station. So uh, we're thankful that God has allowed us to do these things and help. We contacted the school just down the street, and they're excited about some things. Uh, you'll see it in the bulletin, some things that we're going to do with them. Uh, I was glad the school responded, and it's opened now to where we can go back on campus and do some things. So uh, we're thankful for that. We're going to be helping with Teacher Appreciation Day, uh, with their game day that they have. Uh, the kids always like the popsicles that we give them, and uh, then for their promotion Sunday. So there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, at the school that we're excited about. And um, some of you remember Dale and Kim. Um, they were here. They both are barbershop quartet singers. 
and he was uh, facing uh, dialysis all the time, and he contacted me and said, I'm getting a kidney on Tuesday. That was last week. And then he contacted me, and he said, I'm home. Everything went well. And so he was praising the Lord that he got that new kidney. Susan Swedberg, if you remember Susan and Frank, they usually come in, and she, he's real tall, she's real tall, she wears a hat sometimes. Uh, there are snowbirds, they go to Palm Springs in the winter and come back when it warms up here a little bit. So uh, she had gallbladder surgery yesterday, and uh, she said that she was hoping, or Friday, she said she was hoping to get out today, but everything went well, so we praise the Lord for that. Some of you were praying for her. Sophia is currently at uh, the... Uh, urgent care was it the same ankle okay same ankle that she's hurt before so we're glad that she's being seen and uh, thankful any other answers to prayer or things to be thankful about today God has blessed you with yes okay got a teenager in your home has it been a gradual change or a just total change yeah, those of you that have raised teenagers, you absolutely understand. So pray for them. Yes. I'm thankful for our friends who have been Yes. Um, Deb and Pat Conley opened up their home for us to stay with them when we first moved to Las Vegas. We won't talk about how many years ago, but it was a few. <laughs> There's a few down the road, um, and they were a very a good part of our church, and they were a blessing to us and still good friends and uh, they've led, been with their church team uh, Deb has been, come down a couple of times or one time with their daughter to go into Mexico they're one of the teams that spends the night here and it's through that connection there's a gentleman in their church that's working with Juvenal to start a church in TJ and uh, he said Pastor Walt I got to bring a bunch of stuff down uh, all kinds of stuff to help start this church but he said I can't get it all across the border in one swoop because I know they'll, won't, they'll be upset. And I, he goes, can I store some at the church? And I go, absolutely. Absolutely. We're all about helping stuff get across. So um, I'm excited about that. He'll be coming down in a couple of weeks. Katie. All right. Katie has got a new job promotion. Officially at Ralph's, she is a key carrier. So a front-end manager. So that's great. All right. Any other answers to prayer? Yes. All right. That's good. Damien's been able to eat a little bit more different types of food. So his taste is coming back to him. All right. So let's continue to pray for uh, these. Jerry is not here today because he's feeling a little under the weather. And so pray for Jerry. And pray for Ida as she continues to see a specialist about her mouth. Uh, the eye, ear, nose, and throat specialist. She'd like us to pray for that. And uh, pray continually for Ricardo's family, that God can be with them, especially in the situation with his dad. And we're glad to know that Suzanne is here today in the nursery. Uh, is she feeling a little bit better today? Okay, keep her in prayer with her uh, allergy problems. Um, being, we're glad to see Wayne back and Tricia today keep you in prayer Wayne all right any other prayer requests today yes yes absolutely people that are involved that's happening terrible things and the war continuing so we want to pray for that and pray for our leadership here as we make choices and decisions and change things so yes ma'am Okay, Gabriella. Okay, she has. I. Okay. Okay. Um, we mentioned Wednesday night. Uh, somebody had heard that Dr. Jeremiah fell, and they didn't know. That's pastor of Shadow Mountain. We don't know any other details, uh, but we would be in prayer for them as well. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer today. Thank you, Lord. For all the things that you're doing, we thank you for uh, the good Easter time that we had with the communion service, with Set Free, and uh, with the Easter service, and just everything that went on. We are thankful for that. 
And we're thankful for answered prayer for Dwight and for Tina and uh, that you have been with Damien and helped him and with Katie. Um, we're just thankful that uh, you've had your hand upon others that have had illnesses. I'm uh, glad to see uh, Wayne here today and Susanna here today. We're glad for that you've been with Mario and Ruth and the baby. And we're just thankful. We're thankful that Dale is fine after his kidney transplant and that uh, you've been with Susanna, th- uh, uh, with uh, Susan through her surgery as well. Lord, we pray that you might be with us today um, with these needs. Continue to be with us as we work in the school level, that we can do some great things there. Uh, we pray for uh, Gabriella from Los Mochis, that you might be with her. They might find out what's going on. Uh, for Ida, as she's waiting for an appointment. For Jerry with his cold. And uh, we pray for the situation with Ricardo's family. Uh, we pray that you might continue to be with Sharon with cancer and with Bob with cancer. Lord, I pray for Ziggy and his wife with cancer as well. We thank you that Jed is doing better, uh, but continue to help him. Lord, I pray for the unspoken requests uh, for Andrew and for D- Tina and Dwight and Dan and Amaya and Samantha and Linda, Benita and Ricardo's family and Vanessa and Amanda's dad and Michi's family. We pray for spiritual needs. We pray for Liz's family, for salvation of her siblings, uh, for Jerry's family for salvation of his daughters. Um, we're thankful that uh, his, uh, most of his family knows you, but we pray for his daughters in particular. We pray, Lord, for Blanca, that she might come to Christ. We pray for Isabel's family, and we pray for Becky's family. We pray for Phil and Gladys's family, and we pray for Larry Bradshaw, Lord, that you might open up hearts to you. Uh, these friends that are listed, and we pray for our neighbors. Uh, we pray that you might uh, help us to be a good gospel witness in our community. Uh, We pray for Randy for work, that you might give him a different job. Lord, we also are praying uh, for Set Free, that we might see growth there for that church. Help them to get the home in the area that they need so they can change and do some things here in our community. Lord, we're praying also for the situation in the Ukraine. We know that you said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. And Lord, we know that's going to happen, but we know also the suffering that goes along. Not just the military families, but also the civilians. We pray for the leaders. We know that there will never really ever be any peace until you're seated, that you're seated on your throne, and then there'll be peace. But Lord, we do pray for this situation. Help our president to know what to say and to do, and uh, help Putin to stop withdraw back but just be with families of people that are suffering have lost loved ones that have died and and have been injured horribly we pray for this situation with the refugees as they are working that you might be uh, with Juvenal on that side of the border and with the disaster relief on this side of the border that we might be able to help them and uh, keep the tensions down Lord uh, with the other refugees that have been waiting for many many months to come in that you might have your hand upon them, whether they be Haitian or Somalian or from Central and South America. We ask that you might just have your hand upon them and work with those that are working with them. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The children going out. Yes? No? Katie went out. Katie, are the children going out? All right. Okay. We're going to continue today with Jesus is the real hero. Jesus is the real hero. We talked last Sunday about how he is the only one that has given his life and has come back to life. All the other heroes that we see in the pale imitation of the gospel, uh, they might be willing to sacrifice their life to save humanity, but then they don't come back to life. That's it. That's the end. The Marvel hero, Thor, and Thor comes from Norse, if I can say this correctly without missing my letters, Norse mythology. But in the Marvel universe, he's the prince of Asgard, which is a a far-off planet. He's the son of Odin, and his brother is Loki, or Loki, the trickster. 
And it's a very interesting situation and a lot of parallels between Thor and Odin and Loki and all their problems and everything that goes on. Thor is incredibly long-lived and relies upon periodic consumption of golden apples to sustain this lifespan. It's interesting that he has to eat golden apples. He becomes king of the Asgardians with his father is killed, but when Asgard is destroyed, he travels as a refugee to Earth. And you know that uh, we've been talking about different Marvel superheroes, Superman and all these different ones and how they might be held up as a superhero and, and people might, oh, wow, we need a superhero, but they always have a failure. They always have a, a flaw. They always have a problem. And, and Thor is no different from any of the other ones uh, because you know, he can lose his temper and he will attack friend and foe alike. Um, he's nothing if not with, without his hammer. You know, there's all kinds of little things. And I do believe that the reason that God doesn't allow these superheroes to be without flaw is because there's only one hero that's without flaw, and that's Jesus Christ. But uh, Satan is always trying to attack Jesus in his perfection. There is a group that calls itself Christian that says Jesus is, has a brother that's a trickster that wants to destroy. He's, they say that Jesus and Satan are brothers. And the reason Satan does such terrible things is because when Jesus and Satan presented their plans for salvation of mankind, Jesus was accepted, but not Satan's. But there's a whole lot of parallels there. We have to be so astute. We need to be looking at what our society presents and say, that doesn't line up with what the Bible has to say. Be careful about having a worldview or a Christian worldview. But we know that Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Because He is the Son of God and willing to give up His life to bring reconciliation, God places Him at His right hand in heaven, and now all things will be under His feet. So we're going to look at the kingdom of Jesus Christ today. The kingdom of Jesus Christ. And we'll be reading in Revelation, but we're going to look at some other passages as well. It's very interesting. We find uh, that the very beginning, Jesus begins his ministry by preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And there's another Christian group that says the kingdom is already here. I will tell you this, I do not believe the kingdom is already here in a physical form. I'll explain it a little bit more in just a moment. But we're going to be looking in Mark. So we're going to start in the book of Mark, chapter 1. Now, the Gospels tell us that John the Baptist came. He's Jesus' cousin. He is the signpost that points to Jesus. And he says... It's you need to be baptized and repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he says that there's going to be one who's going to come that I'm not worthy to unlatch his sandal. And there are all kinds. Of, they say, are you the Messiah? And he goes, no, 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 no. Don't get that confused. I'm not the Messiah. But he is warning them that the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, Jesus starts, it seemed it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately, coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now you might want to notate there, this is one of the verses that's used to prove the Trinity. Because you see that all three parts of the Trinity are there. Jesus has just been baptized, and the Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove, and a voice from heaven speaks and says, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So this is just the sideline, folks. It's not part of the message, but it is a proof. Somebody said, well, if Jesus was perfect, why did he have to get baptized? He was showing as an illustration 
the, the thing that they would have to go through because they would go through ritual cleansings before they could worship. And so Jesus comes and he's baptized. John initially says, uh, I should be baptized. You should be baptizing me, not me not baptizing you. But it has to happen. By the way, uh, we don't believe that Jesus was sprinkled or poured upon. It says he came up out of the water and there is water pools in the Jordan River even today that you can go and get baptized, fully immersed. I think Paul and Linda, you guys were baptized there, right? Okay, Linda was, and I know my brother has been. Maybe some others have. But that's not the message, okay? So uh, Jesus' ministry is approved by God at this point. Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast. And at the very beginning of the series, remember we talked about how Jesus resisted temptation for after he had fasted for 40 days. And then the angels ministered to him. Now after John was put into prison, and that's a whole other story, we won't go into that today, but it says Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Some were happy to hear him say the kingdom of God was at hand. The kingdom of God refers to a set time period where Jesus will rule and reign for a thousand years. Satan will be bound and thrown into the fiery pit and the Antichrist, the false prophet. And there are multitudes of verses in the Old Testament that talk about the, bloss the desert blossoming like a rose. So Las Vegas will no longer be in a desert. It'll be in a very beautiful place. Hopefully the humidity won't go up with that. Maybe it'll still be a dry heat. We don't know. Um, but there'll be plenty of food. If you live to be 100 years old, you'll be considered a child. And people say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Will you go to Jerusalem and see him live and in person? Because he'll be on his throne in the temple in Jerusalem during that thousand years. Uh, a child will be able to play with a scorpion and a snake and not be hurt. And the lamb will lie down with the lion. It'll be a, a wonderful time where disease will be gone and everybody will have plenty to eat and it'll be well. And that's the kingdom of God. And it's referred to many times. Israel will be at the forefront because if somebody wants to know Jesus, they'll come and talk to a Jew who will say, let me introduce you to Jesus. And so when Jesus came and said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, there was a little bit of confusion. They didn't understand that Jesus had to do something else first. Namely, he had to die on the cross for the sins of the world before we could get to that thousand-year kingdom. That's why the disciples kept saying, when are you setting up your kingdom? Can we sit on either side of your throne when you set up your kingdom? We don't understand. You've got to die and what? We thought you were going to set up your kingdom because they were wanting to get rid of the Roman occupation. They were wanting to have God be there with them all the time, and just it would be perfect, but that's not the way it was going to go initially. Notice the phrase. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What is the gospel message? that Jesus died for sinners, was buried, and rose again the third day. That's in 1 Corinthians 15. But the gospel is, is you're a sinner, you need a Savior, you need your life changed, you need your heart changed. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to reconcile us to God. So that's the first part of the gospel message. Not the thousand year reign of Christ, but that God wants to change your heart. He wants you to be reconciled to Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes, whosoever is what you put your name at, 
Whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved. That's what Jesus started preaching. He didn't come along and say, we're going to kick the Romans out. And you guys that are hungry, you won't be hungry anymore. And you're worried about your vineyard bringing a good crop in, you're going to have plenty. There will be more than enough for everybody. And there will be no more uh, famine and no more terrible tornadoes or hurricanes. He didn't come and say that. He said, come, I want to change your heart. And we see that throughout His ministry in the Gospels. He comes across a tax collector who is considered very low, dishonest, He's a little short guy named Zacchaeus and he's climbed up in a tree to see Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm going to your house today. And Zacchaeus says, I'm changing my life today because my heart's been changed. The demoniac, remember we saw him a few weeks ago that he was, the demons were cast out and he was in his right mind. His life had been changed. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel because the only true way into the kingdom of God is by a heart change. It has to start with a heart change. Now let me track this out for you. How many of you have lived in the south part of the United States? Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, somewhere back there. And you've heard and seen such and such Baptist hospital. Ever seen that anywhere? Baptist hospitals? You say, wow, I didn't know Baptist had a hospital. I guess I need to get a different health plan. But back east in the south, we're in the Bible Belt. I don't know if there's any up in Ohio. Do you remember if there was any Baptist hospitals up in Ohio? I don't think so. Uh, but there are a lot of institutions that help deal with human problems that have been started by peoples whose lives have been changed. You were mentioning that you guys helped put together meals for the Ukrainian refugees. That ministry was started by people whose hearts were changed. And so they are advancing the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom comes into being by initially in this church age, and you can find it in the epistles of Paul and the other letters, that our hearts are changed to do good things in the name of Jesus Christ that bring glory to God. So that means someone who may have been a salesman, and there's nothing wrong with being a salesman, selling cars, selling vacuum cleaners door to door, but they come to Jesus and their hearts changed. And now, what do they want to talk about all the time? They want to talk about Jesus all the time. Or, maybe they have a heart for helping people work on cars. And they come to Jesus. And their heart is changed. And they advance the kingdom of God by helping people who, maybe single moms, who can't get their cars worked on. Because they don't have the money that these men and or women will work on their car and say, don't worry, it's all taken care of. Maybe you've partaken in a ministry like that. See, the kingdom of God comes into our hearts and then we work to change the society. Not necessarily by promoting legislative change. Now, I hope you don't get mad at me for saying this. I, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the state of California is working on passing a law that, from what I understand, you can abort a child after they've been born for up to 28 days. It's horrible. Should we go protest about that? Should we speak up about that? Should we do something about that? Well, we can try with legislation, but folks... Evil and sin continue in spite of good legislation. What do we got to do? We need to talk to people about Jesus more because when people's hearts are in the right place, then they'll do the right thing. God will work in their hearts and it'll change our society. 
Well, prove this to me. Prove it is supposed to be a heart change. Well, we'll start in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Jesus comes preaching the gospel of the kingdom. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. And yes, this is a Nicodemus that helped Joseph of Arimathea wrap up Jesus' body and put it in the new tomb. So he must have come to believe in Jesus. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Well, that's a very nice bit of flattery. But that's not what was on Nicodemus' heart. Nicodemus wanted to know how he could get right with God. Because it, ha- it wasn't doing it the way he had been doing it as a law-abiding Old Testament person. But Jesus comes along and he goes, there's something different. But he brings a question and we, <laughs> I want to just... I've got a question in my heart, but I'm going to flatter you for a minute. What did Jesus do? Jesus went right to the bottom of the question, and what does he say? Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again. You see that? That means something has to change, right? If you're born again. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know why puppies and kittens and babies are born so small and cute and cuddly? It's so we'll keep them. Okay? Now, I love my grandson. Dwight, you held him for a few minutes. He's a good-sized boy. When he gets to be 15, I don't think I'll be picking him up anymore. Okay? I don't know how we would have responded if he would have sprung out at the age of 15, the size of a 15-year-old. We probably would have said, ugh. Did you ever get a dog at, at wherever you get your puppies at and it seems like their feet swelled up overnight? You picked them up and, you know, that's one of the indicators if you're going to have a big dog or not, whether they got big feet. So you look at, oh, it's going to be a good-sized dog, and you get them in the car and their feet go, Whoom. and you're like, um, how big is this dog going to be if he fills out those feet? <laughs> right? So I'm glad that they're small when they first start because that way we'll take them home. They're so cute. We're interested all right, well, I see my daughter out there in the nursery. She's giving me a hard time now because of me saying something about Ezra. All right. Anyway, Nicodemus said, There's no, I, I know what birth is all about. There's no way I can go back into my, my mother's womb and be born again. How, what are you talking about? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, that's regular birth all of us your mother's water broke and you were born and the spirit that's the holy spirit working in your heart to draw you to jesus and to bring you to a life change when you believed in jesus christ unless one has got both of those things you cannot enter the kingdom of god the kingdom of god has got to be in you That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Paul states, if anyone is in Christ, they are a, what? New creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we begin the kingdom of God in our hearts. And there's so much that can be said about that because we could talk about all these things about well, I want to honor God with my life. I, I, want to, I want to praise Him for what He's done for me. And I want to do things for Him in His name. Amen. That's because you're entering the kingdom of God when you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
We just went through the discipleship class the firm, and membership class, and we talked about things that God can help you to see that you can do in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, it's far gone, Ida, from uh, teaching Sunday school to kids, maybe child evangelism to kids. There's a lot more things that are happening. Like I mentioned, there are, are churches that have ministries that they help single moms and people that are struggling financially get their cars fixed because that's a need. I, I've heard of churches going to laundromats and saying, can we help you by putting quarters in the machine so and if you'll just let us tell you about Jesus or we want to share Jesus with you. We want to show you that Jesus loves you. There are so many things that can be done in the name of Jesus Christ. But we don't know that until our heart has been changed. It's interesting that when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, that's from Matthew chapter 6. It's also mentioned in Luke. But he says, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Do we want God to work in our hearts? And act, do we want to act like Jesus is king right now? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Please don't be one of those that prays and gives God your order and say, God, if you don't do this for me, there's going to be problems because God's not a short order cook. Your will be done. James says that we ought to pray and say, your will be done. Here in the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you see how the early Christians and even Christians today live, they live as if the kingdom of God is in existence in their hearts. For me, it shouldn't be all about Walt Hatch anymore. Who's on the throne in my heart? It should be Jesus Christ. And whatever He tells me to do, I do. And whatever He tells me not to do, I don't do. It's not about me, it's about Him. Because of what He did for me on the cross. He paid the ultimate price. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world. Romans 12, 1 and 2. We need to allow the kingdom to be built in our heart. And when we have a heart change, then we begin to develop and to work. What makes Brother Hoovenall do all that he does on the other side of the border? Is he getting paid by somebody to do those meals? Sometimes he spends his own money. He has support, but sometimes he just spends his own money because God's called him to do kingdom work, and he's doing kingdom work. We all should be doing kingdom work. Because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes, Phil, kingdom work can be mowing the grass here at church. Did you know that? Because it needs to be done, right? I appreciate Phil and Jerry coming and others that have come and helped cut hedges or mowed the grass or weeded it or whatever else. I appreciate that. That's a ministry of the kingdom. Because otherwise, the only employee of the church would have to do it all. You know who the only employee of the church is? You're looking at them right here. <laughs> Somebody has to take care of it, right? Yeah, we could contract it out, but uh, God helps us to do. We want to do things at the elementary school. That's kingdom work, where we have an opportunity. Oh, you know why we're doing this? Because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. We want His kingdom to happen. And so the kingdom is sort of already here. And it's not absolutely 100% because Jesus is not in Jerusalem just yet. But he will return one of these days. 
as King of kings and Lord of lords to firmly establish his kingdom on this earth. And everything will run as that prayer said. Our will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Will there still be sin? Yeah. So the first place we want to look at is in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews is a great book to study where it's talking about Jesus Christ and who He is. It starts off with this. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by His Son whom He has appointed heir of all things. Last week we saw that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whom also, through whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. This is Jesus. After he purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of God after those 40 days having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And we don't have time today to continue reading in Hebrews and see what it says about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But Jesus Christ, because of the cross, because of rising from the dead, He is the Son of God and He will be King of kings and Lord of lords. He will fulfill the Old Testament prophecies. We see this in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. This is at the end of the tribulation time period when God judges the earth. Jesus will be part of that because He has the right to judge the earth. But it says, I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse. In their world, the one that rode the white horse, just sort of like the old John Wayne Westerns. Didn't the good guy always always ride a white horse? I know Roy Rogers did, right? Was Trigger white or silver? I don't ever remember. White. I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. That's Jesus Christ. In righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head was many crowns. I've just been reading in the uh, Old Testament about David, and I've read about Joshua and stuff. Uh, David conquered one of the kings that was his enemy, his people's enemies, and he took the crown off that king's head and put it on his own. So the many crowns are all the crowns of the kingdoms of this world they're going to be placed on Jesus' head to show that he is the ultimate ruler of all. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. If you want to write down there John chapter 1, write, read John chapter 1 and what it says about the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. In Hebrews, we're told that the word of God is a sharp two-edged sword. It's alive. 
It leads to the dividing asunder of bone and marrow and of soul and spirit. We know that in Genesis, God spoke and the worlds were created. When Jesus speaks, things happen. Much different than what we know. (laughs) It's fun watching Ezra. He's pretty good at stopping, but the other day, the gate that divides the living room from the rest of the house was open just enough. And he might not walk, but he can crawl pretty fast. So Ruth's sitting over there, and I'm sitting over here. I, I I think Darcy may have been in the back or something, but Ezra saw that little gap, and he headed for it. He's going to go exploring. Ruth's like, you better stop. You're going to get a spanking. I'm heading out. Freedom! I'm going. He did have to pay the penalty when Mama caught him because he didn't listen, right? When Jesus speaks, things happen. God spoke the world into an existence. He brought everything that's created by speaking it in. And so Jesus speaks, things will happen. That's the sharp sword that goes out of his mouth. And he's going to strike the nations to rule them. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Jesus is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is not going to be the cute little baby lying in a manger that came and died for our sins as Savior. He's going to come as sovereign of sovereigns, as king of kings, as lord of lords. If you go back to Psalms, Psalm 22 talks about the suffering Savior. Psalm 23 talks about the shepherd. Psalm 24 talks about the sovereign king, Jesus. He's going to rule them with a rod of iron. They will have to be obeying him. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. Why? Because he died for the world. He earned that. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Do you believe that he's going to return one of these days? Are you ready for his return? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Is he coming today? Because I, I don't think I want him to come today. I've got things I've got to take care of first. I've got some things I've got to mark off my bucket list. I've got some things I've got to... I gotta, oh, if you really want to know, uh, I, I don't want him to come. Uh, my mom said that years ago when she was a child in church and they would talk about the rapture, back in those days... Uh, if you went to the movie theater, you weren't really always considered a great Christian. Things have changed a little bit. Now we just have push a button and it's in our house, right? Um, there were some other... She, My mom did go to the dance hall a little bit. And the preacher would say, well, you don't want to be caught there when Jesus returns because how embarrassing is that going to be? You're standing in the, in the line to go to the movie theater, or you're in the movie theater, and Jesus returns. Well, let me just say this. Your sins will be forgiven when you stand before the Savior. You may have some answering to do, but He will forgive you. But there might be some things that you need to take care of rapidly if you're going to say, I want Him to return. Might be some things you need to straighten out. Sin, bitterness, anger, hatred, racism, prejudice. Things that you need to get out of your life because that doesn't belong. Yes, He'll forgive you. But are you ready for His return? He is coming back and it's not as a baby and not having a lot of power. He will rule and reign over the earth. Did you know that Jesus, his ministry was in Galilee, Samaria, Judea, the opposite side of the Jordan River from those places, and that was it. He never traveled outside. He was in Egypt as a baby, as a young child, yes, but he hadn't begun his ministry yet. He fully intended his disciples, his followers, to then spread the gospel throughout the world, as is almost been finished. 
But that's not the way he's coming back. Every eye will see him. <laughs> Pastors used to say, I don't know how that's going to happen, but we have satellite TV where we can see and all over, if, if we even need that when he returns. Everybody's going to know when he comes back. He is the real hero because he is the one who will rule over all creation. It doesn't matter who you are. He will be your ruler for a thousand years. The thing that, that drives me crazy is I continue reading there in Revelation 19 and 20, and I find out that at the end of the thousand years, where everything is so wonderful and perfect on the earth, and Satan is released, that strangely enough, there are people who would have lived in that wonderful place that will turn against God and follow Satan one more time. It's because of sinful hearts, and people won't believe. I'll believe it if I can see it. Now, there'll be some people that will see it and still won't believe it. They'll see the nail prints and still not believe it. Still not believe in Jesus. It says there's a vast multitude. But God strikes them again before the final great white throne judgment. But he is the one. He is the real hero. There is no one else that can come close. Do you believe that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? If you believe it, then you've got to act like it. I'm a Dodgers fan. I'm a Lakers fan. I grew up in L.A. I can't help myself. But I watched this morning the highlights of the game yesterday, and when they got that single to get that guy, that Padre, off a of third base and home, I went, yes! Because I'm a fickle fan of the Dodgers. I'll support the Padres just because they're in town and because I have a lot of friends but folks, you don't get to do that with Jesus Christ. Do you believe that he's the King of kings and Lord of lords? Are you excited about his return? Can you say, as it says in Revelation, the final chapter, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Can you say that? Or is there things you've got to deal with and take care of yet in your life? If so, let me, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he will help you to know what you need to deal with and take care of what's sin or whatever else. He'll help you know how to live as if you are in the kingdom even now. There's so much more that could be said. I want to live kingdom-wise now in my relationship with my wife, with my children, with my grandson, with my community, with my church. I want to live the kingdom life now to where I live like Jesus Christ is king all the time. How about you? Let's bow our heads for just a moment. I have this question for you. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you know Him and you have Him in your heart and life, are you living as if He's the King of Kings? Are you still struggling with sin? Are you still struggling with bitterness, with anger, with racism, prejudice? Are you still dealing with those things and you need to get them out of your life because that's not what the kingdom of God is all about according to the Word. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you don't know Jesus because you've never invited him into your life. Maybe you're watching online and you say, well, what does that mean? You need to admit that you're a sinner. I've broken God's commandments. You need to believe that he died on the cross for you. You need to ask him into your life and you need to confess that he is Lord. It's the simplest thing in the world. That's how you get to know Jesus Christ. Have you done that yet in your life, dear Christian? Dear unbeliever, if you don't know Jesus, have you done that? Let me encourage you, if you would like to, to talk to me immediately after the service and say, I want to know more about what that is, what that means. So I can share with you about Jesus Christ or have someone else share with you about Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all that you've blessed us with. I thank you that you are the real hero of the, the world's story. All these others are just faint little glimmers of shadows, of reflections, and we all make out, well, they're such a great hero. We need a hero to come and rescue us. Lord, you've come to rescue us. The Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit confirmed it, and God from heaven above confirmed it, that Jesus Christ is the hero because he's the Savior of the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and dying for us. 
so that we can be reconciled. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for your return, Lord. Help us to live as if that return is tomorrow, today. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have just a couple of announcements. If you have a bulletin and you are looking at it, there is a sheet of paper that has May happenings. So next week, there's going to be a... uh, Everybody is invited after church. We're going to cook hamburgers and hot dogs out here, and it's going to be a shower for David and Vanessa. They're not taking a shower. We're showering them. So I don't know if they have needs. I don't know if they have a... Do you guys have a registry anywhere? No? Walmart.com register, right? (laughs) All right, but uh, maybe talk to them. Maybe if you would like... But if you'd like to stay, Liz has a sign-up sheet. Um, the church will provide the burgers and the dogs, but we need like, and the buns, but we need like, uh, and the condiments, but we need like potato salad or a dessert or whatever. If you want to do that next Sunday, right after church, then next week, not this week, but next week is teacher appreciation. And I've talked to set free. We think that they can provide a meal, a lunch, possible that IBTF can provide a lunch. We're going to provide a lunch as well. And if you'd like to take part in that, uh, and just give financially towards that. You can just put for a, a appreciation lunch. Um, then their wedding is on the 1st, is uh, the 13th at 1 o'clock. Let's see, I caught you. The 14th. Okay, so it's wrong here. It's on the 14th at 1 o'clock. You better, I'm saying, I'm testing, Vanessa. I'm seeing if he knows these things. <laughs> and um, everybody is invited, right? Okay, here at the church. And then if you can help on the 27th, that's, uh, we're going to be at the elementary school setting up chairs. It's a fairly early time. Maybe you can come and help set up. Uh, they just need a little bit of help. And then on the 28th, we're doing vacation Bible school training. Uh, so if you're interested in helping with vacation Bible school this year, then plan on being here at the church. All right? Um, Darcy can help you register for that. Well, let's stand, and we're going to sing one final song.